Now we will be uh, specifically talking about expressway series devices. So first, uh, expressway series devices are used as call processing devices for video endpoints, allowing them to register to expressway C and place calls to remote destinations. So these are the functions and the use case of expressway. So expressway C is used to place calls to remote destination. Here we configure the dial plans and the uh, call setup can be configured. So expressway uh, can also be configured to allow the endpoint registrations only to the trusted devices and to deny endpoint registration to the other untrusted devices. Once the endpoints are registered on Expressway C, the dial plan can be configured to allow or block call attempts to the remote destinations. So th these are the different uh, configurations we can do and the security we can configure. We can configure policies on uh, Expressway. So here we will learn the architecture, key features, functions of Expressway series devices, and then we'll do some basic labs uh, for Expressway as well. So this is the architecture where we can see the placement of the expressway devices. We have expressway C, expressway E. So firstly, as we discussed, expressway series consists of these two main applications, expressway C referred to as core and E as edge. C and E expressway provide both the collaboration integration services to extend the reach and scope of the collaboration network. So with Expressway C, this is uh, deployed inside of the corporate network and provides collaboration services uh, to SIP and HT23 compliant endpoints. So supports SIP, HT23 compliant endpoints. So it supports a uh, call between SIP to SIP devices, HT23 to HT23, and between SIP and HT23. So there's a special feature of interworking, uh, which is supported on Expressway. So it acts as a communication gateway between these endpoints for CUCN. So let's suppose in your corporate network, you have some uh, devices registered on the CUCM and some devices registered on the expressway. Not here. And if you want to make communication between these, that is possible through expressway. We need to have uh, interworking if we have different uh, devices like say Penish to three different devices, then we would require that. Or if we have only SIP devices, then without having interworking uh, to be enabled, we can have these devices between CUCM and Expressway endpoints can communicate to one another. And for any other third party, we need to have interoperability, which is supported on Expressway C. Then uh, Cisco Expressway C, uh, some devices which are supported are these. So some integrations we can do here, like Expressway C provides registration services for HT23 and standard SIP compliant endpoints. Uh, Expressway C performs address lookup and routing services also, let me write those here. So first provides registration services. Then it also provides address lookup. Like some uh, routing services as well. Yeah, we can perform policies here to allow only the trusted devices to be registered or to make certain calls. Yeah. Uh, so, which we enable to connect to the collaboration network and integrate with the other collaboration services, including devices that are registered on CUCM or conferencing services business to business infrastructure, third party video infrastructure, or uh, collaboration cloud services. All that is supported by Expressway. So to make communication with all these different endpoints and uh, devices in different networks and, or deployments that is all supported with, within Expressway C. Then uh, the call control that Expressway C provides is between SIP and H23 endpoints. So it connect calls, it manage bandwidth and restricts access. So first it can connect calls between different and same uh, SIP or HT23 compliant devices. It can manage bandwidth. So we can also configure uh, bandwidth management through quality of service, or we can assign a specific uh, bandwidth for certain calls or group of calls. We can restrict access using policies on Expressway C. 
so uh, that we will see also how we can configure. Then Expressway C also provides call control for registered endpoints and all calls passing through the Expressway C node. And it includes connecting calls between devices and services that are registered on Expressway C or between devices and services on other part of collaboration, for example, CUCM. Okay. Expressway C can then manage bandwidth for all calls that pass through it to enable uh, flexible management of the network resources. Also, we can enable collaboration network managers to have full control of the activity on the network by ensuring that the endpoints are only allowed to reach the other permitted endpoints, uh, authorized endpoints and collaboration services. So this is a level of security that can prevent the unwanted intrusion or common security risks such as toll fraud uh, that are all the specifications and uh, services provided within the Expressway C. Then uh, this is protocol interworking, which is supported on Expressway C. So we can make you know, prot protocol interworking to enable S323 and SIP endpoints to be able to communicate to one another. So there is a feature of interworking that is by default off. If you want, uh, if you have endpoints, different endpoints like SIP and S323, or even if you have IPv4 and IPv6 implementation in your network. So to make them interwork, we can enable interworking. Okay. So to ensure that the collaboration is not just restricted to specific device that runs a specific protocol on Expressway, we can enable this protocol interworking. If uh, let's suppose the companies have older traditional S223 endpoints at the new or the sick ones, S223 are the old traditional endpoints, but let's suppose some companies are using those and uh, some new SIP endpoints also or SIP specific services, then inter uh, interworking would be required to be enabled for these devices to communicate seamlessly uh, with one another. This uh, between SIP and HT23 can also be provided to endpoints that are not only registered to Expressway, but are registered to other uh, components like uh, CUCM within the same network. So uh, what can happen is, let's suppose we have another endpoint which is registered on a CUCM. Now on CUCM, definitely it will be a SIP endpoint, not S223 because CUCM does not support S223 endpoint registration. So a SIP device here and it supports a S223 device on Expressway C can still communicate with one another via Expressway C due to its interval capability. So same interworking feature also applies to companies that have these mixture of devices that are running IP version 4 and the new IP version 6 network addresses and Expressway C can then interwork the calls between these organizations. So it can do those translations between the IP version 4 and IP version 6 within the same device. Uh, in case of migration between these protocols, we can have Expressway C to be able to interwork between these different protocols. Next, about some important features of Expressway C, that is about some third party applications. So this is one of the most important feature of Expressway, that is its ability to integrate standard as well as non-standard devices. Non-standard means the third party ones to ensure that the collaboration is not just restricted to a single vendor. For example, Expressway C can integrate uh, and transport communication to allow SIP devices to communicate with Microsoft site for business clients, which use uh, Microsoft specific extensions of the SIP protocol. Then some deployment types for Expressway. This is centralized deployment where let's suppose in the headquarter, we have the Expressway deployed and it's just on a centralized point at one headquarter and the other sites or the site, uh, all other branches let's support are getting registered. All the endpoints on the other branches are getting registered on the headquarter. Expressway only. Now there are some advantages and disadvantages both to it. Advantage would be less cost, uh, less uh, administrative overhead, but uh, for cost, if this will take more cost and bandwidth will be consumed and there can be delays uh, for the, yeah. Uh, so, and this is again a single point of failure also. So uh, in Expressway C architecture, which allows the centralized deployment in Expressway C servers, which are uh, in deployment, such as where is, there is distributed geography to ensure that much traffic, which remains local rather than going to the 
bandwidth. So in such case, we can have centralized deployment. In this figure, here we see that all the global endpoints which are registered to the expressway, uh, which is just at a central point that is headquarter. Then uh, even if two devices which were in the same country, every time the signal would travel across the van to the expressway. So like if uh, let's suppose in Brazil, the two devices A and B have to communicate to one another, the entire whole process will happen through the van to uh, via the expressway, which is located in the headquarter. So that can be one drawback of this type of uh, deployment. Yeah. But this is one type of deployment that we can have. Then next we can have decentralized deployment. Now here it is uh, distributed. This is decentralized. So not uh, all the devices are registered to a central uh, expressway. We have separate expressway servers on each site. So in this uh, distributed expressway architecture, local call signaling will only go to the local expressway, which reduces the van traffic in the only those calls that are made between the countries or regions that would go through the van and not all. So those are the two deployment types, centralized and decentralized. Then we have uh, Expressway C cluster capacity. So in Expressway C cluster, uh, we can have up to six servers, but four active servers. So like we uh, discussed in CUCM, we can have eight subscribers, but only four are active at a time. Similarly, in Expressway, we have a, a maximum of six servers. Uh, and we can have up to four active servers. Yeah. And based on a single deployment or a single expressway deployment or a cluster deployment, the different number of devices are supported. So in a single expressway for small medium network, uh, the maximum registration supported are 2,500. Same is for the case of large deployment. But uh, the video calls and audio calls support varies. Uh, like for a single Cisco Expressway, video call supported are 100 for small medium network and 500 for large networks, audio calls 200 and 1000 for large networks. Similarly, in clustered Expressway, uh, we can have four active servers at a time and that would give you maximum re registration of exactly the four times of this. So you will see that 10,000 of the total uh, registration supported. Uh, in a cluster, then video calls is 400 for small medium network and 2000 for large network, 800 audio calls for small medium network and 4000 uh, for large network. So this is about the cluster capacity. Yeah, uh, I have a question for you. So as we are talking about expressway cluster, can we have uh, expressway C and expressway E within the same cluster? <laughs> 